starts getting a bit tense when it gets really hot. If you come into Africa, I think that you should make sure that the specific production that you want to do, that the company that you do hire has been under the most harshest situations in that particular uh, game because it's not very easy. Uh, we, have, we have a hell of a hard climate here. We've got to make sure the guys are looked after very well on the clothing side, on the medical side. Uh, we've got to watch our waters in most areas that we go to. So logistically, looking after people, it's, it's quite a tough one, you know, and you cannot just give it over to any production company. I think it's one of the most fantastic experiences I've had because I'm, I'm a nature lover and I had sort of preconceived ideas before I came on the shoot and most of my preconceived ideas have been changed completely. It's not the first time that we work with a film crew but I must admit uh, this was one of the most professional uh, crews I had in camp so far. Yeah. <laughs> Being awakened to the fact that there's a difference between a conservationist and a preservationist and what we have in the world is a hundred people that call themselves conservationists which aren't actually conservationists, they're preservationists. Conservationist is a person that's going to make man and animals live together on this planet and not just one particular species of animal or man on his own. That the, the fact that we have to actually live together. I must say I feel a hell of a lot more at home in, in Namibia for some unknown reason. Um, but Swana isn't hostile, but I, I felt that because we were so close to seeing the, the destruction of the environment, of the, uh, of, of the landed area that we were in, the encroaching desert in what was once riverine forest, and seeing these poor energyless elephant actually trek to the water each day and away back into the hinterland for food the next day, I think that was quite uh, depressing. It, uh, I saw that the Botswana tourism structure was based upon a very tragic situation, and I think that's, I think that's really what 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 stirred me. Uh, Namibia, I felt the elephant were happier, and because the elephant were happier, I, I, I you know, I felt more at home. <laughs> Not that I'm an elephant, but I felt more at home in Namibia. This was our last night on the Akavango River, but while everyone appeared saddened, it was clear that everyone was also eager to return to the comfort of their normal lifestyles. Early the next morning, our transportation arrived at the dirt airstrip at Bagani. As custom, all gear was checked and accounted for before being loaded onto the plane. Although everyone appeared excited to be returning home, the sheer exhaustion of the last several days was beginning to show. <laughs> At Mapacha Airport, we once again unloaded our gear and reloaded it onto the plane that was to take us to our final destination the lost city in South Africa. Upon arrival at Sun City, we were greeted by team members of our production staff that had traveled up from Johannesburg that morning to set up before our arrival. This included transporting the giraffe crane as well as the grips and lighting team along with their respective equipment. It was essential to have everything organized before our arrival in order to make the best use of what remained of the day.
The palace of the lost city was constructed at a cost of plus minus 200 million U.S. dollars. The crane was set up on the bridge of time where our first shots were filmed at the spectacular palace of the lost city. Smoke machines were used to add atmosphere to several sequences. The giraffe crane weighs several hundred kilograms, and it takes quite a great deal of physical strength to transport it up from one location to the next. Wow. This, uh, this, Action! This is Maxine Lawrence, uh, our production manager, is, who actually ran this whole shoot on uh, the wildlife game. And it was uh, her work and the team's work back at the office that actually got us floating around this whole bloody country, smooth as a baby's bum. of their preference, for when it comes to wildlife, society is forever critical. Whatever the rights or wrongs of this, if the man in the street really wishes to influence wildlife management decisions, he must be prepared to make the effort to keep himself informed. The finale was filmed within the courtyard at the Lost City, which was cordoned off especially for us. Setting up is always the most time-consuming process, especially when tracks, lights, and cranes are involved. Okay, sometimes getting a scene right can be even more time consuming and frustrating. The clapperboard helps to keep track of the scene that is finally used and to lip synchronize the audio, which is recorded separately with the visual picture. 72 take two. Huh? Responsible government. <laughs> huh? 72 take four. Mark. The alternative to us allowing governments. Can a two take five. Mark. 
None of the management recommendations that we have made in this program. 72 take 6. Mark. That will support the return of common sense. Bluff. Bluff. Take 7. Mark. Proposals we have made in this program. 2 take 10. Mark. That's the one. Mark. 72 take 13. Mark. 72 take 14. Mark. Our shoot finally drew to a close on our incredible adventure across Southern Africa. Truly this land of lost horizons is an unfathomable experience. Although we're no longer physically there, a tiny part of us will always remain behind with the majestic African elephant. The wildlife game is our photographic tribute to the elephants of Africa. It is a poignant look at the bewildering dangers that even now face these great beasts. You have heard the facts. You have seen the reality. But the wildlife management recommendations that we have made in this program will never be applied without your understanding and acceptance. Literally, the future of the African elephant lies in our hands. For it is within our power to create the social attitude that will support the return of common sense to the practice of wildlife management. Unless you and I support governments to apply responsible elephant management today, all we will have to hand down to our grandchildren will be the mere effigy of a magnificent animal that once was.